Hello everyone, are you planning to set up a hybrid configuration between your Exchange and Office 365? Let's do it together. Myself, Mohamed Niaz, I'm an IT specialist for Microsoft Related Technologies. There are many reasons for organizations today to choose a hybrid setup between Office 365 and on-premises. For example, your organization, you have many users and you don't need the same capability for all the users then it's a good choice to go for hybrid because in hybrid you can keep some of your users into Office 365 and other users you can still keep in on-premises exchange server. By that way you can uh, still benefit from the investments that you've made uh, for on-premises setup. Anyway, once you decided to move to Office 365, the first thing you have to do is to get a subscription of Office 365 and you need to make sure that you get a subscription with a exchange online because exchange online is mandatory to set up a hybrid configuration between your on-premises and office 365 this is the first part of a hybrid configuration series and in this video we're going to see what are the different topologies that is available for active directory synchronization and also we will discuss about the different topologies that is available for hex change hybrid configuration then we will create an office 365 subscription then we will verify our domain with Office 365 subscription. The rest of that part we will continue in the second video. So let's start. An Office 365 hybrid configuration requires synchronization of on-premises Active Directory and Exchange Server with Azure Active Directory and Exchange Online. So what we're going to discuss is there are different methods to synchronize your on-premises Active Directory with Azure AD. And also there are different topologies that you can configure your exchange server with online exchange. So in the coming part, we're going to discuss different methods uh, to synchronize Active Directory and exchange server. This video will also help you to decide what method to be more adaptable for your environment. So based upon that, you can choose one of the method and you can start hybrid configuration. The first part in hybrid configuration is to synchronize your Active Directory. So there are different methods to synchronize your Active Directory. The first one is password hash synchronization. This is the simplest way to enable authentication for on-premises Active Directory objects with Azure Active Directory. And in short form it is called PHS. So here what you do, you synchronize your on-premises Active Directory users objects with office 365 and still you manage your users in on-premises so office 365 users can uh, resolve their authentication from azure active directory at the same time the user's password or uh, any attributes anything related to user you can control you can reset the password all from on-premises so you synchronize your username and password with azure active directory still you manage your users at on-premises at the same time, Office 365 can resolve users from Azure Active Directory. The second option is pass-through authentication. This is another simplest uh, password validation for Azure Active Directory authentication. So it runs a software agent in one or more on-premises servers. It is not mandatory to run this agent in your Active Directory or Exchange. You can uh, run this in any of the server in your on-premises. So when a authentication is required this agent will authenticate it with the on-premises active directory and answers to the office 365 so here you synchronize your accounts but the validation is always uh, through on-premises that is the difference between password hashing and pass-through authentication the third option is federated authentication option you can use active directory federation service this is a complex authentication and it always uh, preferred by large enterprise organization uh, they need uh, complex authentication requirements in this case uh, office 365 or azure active directory hands off the authentication completely to on-premises and active directory federation service will raise a token to office 365 to authenticate the accounts the same way when it comes to hybrid topology of exchange server there are two topologies exchange classic hybrid and exchange modern hybrid in an exchange classic hybrid this is a traditional approach like your exchange online connected to your exchange server in on-premises over the internet uh, and this requires your exchange server to be accessible over the internet 
and you need a third party SSL certificate also. So this exchange servers uh, communicate in between to send and receive email between the users in on-premises and Office 365. This is a good choice if you already published your exchange endpoints such as OVA to the internet. The other option is Exchange Modern Hybrid. In this, uh, we install a hybrid agent in any of the ex any of the server in on-premises and that communicate between the Exchange Online and your on-premises Exchange server. So this hybrid agent is based on uh, Azure AD application process technologies will take over the communication between Exchange Online and your Exchange environment. As I said, this agent can be installed either on a standalone server or in your Exchange server. In this case, you don't need a third party certificate and also you don't need to publish your Exchange server to the internet because the communication here is handled by the hybrid agent. Exchange server is not directly connected to Exchange Online. We talk about uh, Active Directory synchronization and also we talk about the connectivity between on-premises and online exchange server and this is the important thing how you want to receive your email and how you want to send your email because you have two exchange server one is on-premises and one is an online exchange server so you can send email from both the exchange you can receive email either at uh, online exchange or at uh, on-premises exchange look at this scenario here I have configured my hybrid setup to receive all the incoming emails to Office 365. So when I receive an email uh, for users like one user for Office 365 and another user for Exchange on-premises, all the emails will come at one channel that is Exchange Online and whatever the email belongs to a user in on-premises will be handed over to on-premises Exchange Server. In this setup, if a user send an email from on-premises Exchange Server, the recipient will receive the email from on-premises exchange server. When you look at the IP address, it shows the on-premises exchange server IP address. So the sending is from Office 365 and on-premises exchange server based upon where the user sit. Only receiving email is centralized in this configuration. When you look at this configuration, you see the sending email and receiving email are centralized. So all will go through Office 365. So all this depends upon your organization interest actually. Uh, the other way to decide is if you have more number of users in Office 365 then it is better to send and receive email at Office 365. If you have more number of users at on-premises and uh, you need uh, to enforce some policy through some edge transport gateway or something like that then you can choose on-premises exchange server organization to send and receive email. So all this depends upon the priority that you give for MX record. So if you want to receive all the email at Office 365, then give higher priority for Office 365 MX record. If you want to receive email for on-premises exchange server organization, then put a high priority for MS record or for your on-premises exchange server. Let's have a look at the exchange server first. Here my exchange server is 2010. It doesn't make much difference uh, whether you have uh, 2010 or 2013 or 2016. Uh, here it's a local client installed. In 2013 and 2016 you will get a exchange administration console, a web console for exchange administration. So that is the only difference. Else all the steps that we're gonna do for hybrid configuration is same whether it is a exchange 2010 or 2013 or 2019. So the exchange console has opened. I have one database here. Uh, as this is a demonstration purpose, I just have very few users, um, like seven to eight users, and one mailbox database, and one exchange server with all the roles installed, hub transport, client access, and mailbox. Here, when you look at the send connector, you will see I'm sending emails directly from this uh, exchange server. In your organization, maybe you're using a third-party device or an uh, edge transport gateway uh, like Ironport or a Symantec Secure Email Gateway. Uh, we will explain how uh, you can uh, configure hybrid uh, with that environment also. And look at the exchange certificate. I have a valid certificate and this is mandatory when you're going to configure a hybrid environment between on-premises and uh, online exchange. And the client access, I have uh, 
configure client access URL, the same URL for internal and external. Then look at the default receive connectors. I have configured uh, these connectors to receive email directly. So that is all about uh, the Exchange Server setup. Now let us take a look at the uh, Active Directory. Look at the domain controllers. I have two domain controllers here. The first one is uh, 2008R2 and the second domain controller is 2012R2. Uh, it's good to have a 2012 r2 server it doesn't need to be an active directory but at least if you have a 2012 r2 server then it is easy to run your exchange hybrid configuration wizard so i recommend at least to use a 2012 r2 server to run the hybrid configuration setup wizard and also for the ad connect the second step is to create a tenant so what is a tenant it's simple to understand for example you have an apartment and you hold all your belongings to that apartment right the same method a tenant is something uh, for your organization it's like an apartment for you and you put everything related to your organization in that tenant so when you create a tenant here your exchange server your sharepoint your office 365 other applications then dynamics then power bi whatever you buy uh, from Office 365 or Azure is going to be connected to this uh, tenant. So Office 365 Business Premium, this is what you minimum required to have a exchange online. There are some other basic essential plans, but it doesn't have a exchange online. So you cannot go for a hybrid environment and based upon the annual and uh, monthly commitment, you will get different prices. So here let's go for a free trial. So you have two options. Either you can redeem the same licenses to your existing subscription. So if you already have a tenant, you can uh, use this uh, trial licenses or the license you purchased to uh, that tenant. Here, I don't have any uh, tenant existing in my organization. So I'm going to create a new tenant. Then click next. Here, you're going to create your first account. So I put myself Nias. And what I am going to write now is the tenant name. And that should be unique like your domain name for example it pro guide or tuition tube in okay it confirmed that this is a unique name so i can use it then give a complex password then click to create my account next part is to verify your account so once you have filled up with the contact number you will get uh, verification sms then you can verify your account and you have two choices you can put call me or text me options so enter your verification code at this point then click next this is the user id that you have to use to sign into your portal first time as this is a new tenant then you can create a multiple global administrator so so more people can manage your office 365 account that is all now you can click uh, to ready to go. So now we just log in to your Office uh, 365 account. So you can see you have Outlook, you have OneDrive, Word, Excel, many things. Let's go to the admin portal now. And this is how the admin center looks. So following are the options that admin center offers you uh, to set up to manage your uh, Office 365 products. And you can see there are 25 free licenses and I can assign to users. Next, we need to add our domain to the tenant that we just created. So you have two options. When you open your uh, admin center, you will see the pending task. So we can add a domain from here or you can go to setup domain, then click add domain. So enter your domain here. Mine is tuition tube.in then click next. I have two options to verify this because this is a GoDaddy domain. So either I can sign in directly to GoDaddy and verify it or I can add a text record in a traditional way and I can verify this. So following other uh, text records that I need to add in my DNS manager to verify this. This is a one method. The other method is to sign in to GoDaddy then you can just one click you can verify your domain.
So first let's see how to add DNS records to verify the domain uh, manually by adding text records. For that go to your DNS management then add a text record. Then uh, copy the values from uh, the admin center. Paste the text value and enter the host value. Then save it. So this is one method to verify your domain uh, with Office 365. The other method is just go back and click uh, sign in to GoDaddy. This method may not be available with uh, all the DNS providers. So it is, if it is available, you can use this because this is the simplest method. Just click authorize. Now your domain has verified. It's asking to add uh, the further records, but that we can do it uh, uh, another time. So let's uh, save and close this. I hope you all enjoyed this video. In this video, what we covered is to create an Office 365 subscription and how to verify your domain with Office 365. In the coming video, we have to synchronize our Active Directory, on-premises Active Directory with Azure Active Directory. So we will continue that part in the second video. Thanks for watching this video. For more videos, subscribe my YouTube channel.